It really isn't supercharged at the moment because it's overheating. We found a ton of stop leak. Is stop leak good for your cooling system or is it gonna cause a catastrophe down the road? We cover on this edition of Inside the Garage. So we know we've got good cooling fans. That's operating as designed. They're coming on. We're still running a little warmer. The next step is uh, we actually use an infrared video. You can use an infrared thermometer. Actually get temperature readings. Right now it's probably reading my forehead. But what we can do is actually get readings right down at the thermostat housing. Now this is about a 185, 190 thermostat and we are getting at about 185, 190. So it's an indication that that thermostat is opening up. So think of your engine as sort of a boiling pot. That thermostat should open up right at that 185 to 195. Some thermostats will open up later. And in some of the hot rod community, thermostats are all over the place. They're gonna open up for optimum fuel enrichment and horsepower. In this case, with a factory setup, that engine starts warming up, thermostat opens up, that hot engine coolant goes in the radiator and the radiator starts to quench and cool and the outlet hose and that outlet hose is now bringing that cooler coolant to make that engine happy engine real happy in fact happy and you happier so thermostat's doing its job it's opening and closing it's a basic check we also got good cooling fan operation We've identified that we've got a flow issue based upon the symptom. As that individual is cruising, the temperature seems to go up, and that's when that radiator is flowing that coolant. And if we've got a lack of flow, we're gonna have a problem. Further talking with the client tells us that he used some stop leak, where it's got all kinds of gunk and goobity goo. As we pull this radiator cap off, we can see inside the neck of that radiator, there's all kinds of gunk. Use some stop leak. So we're gonna pull this radiator, get it all the way out, and see what's inside the radiator. Now that we've got the radiator out, just a quick tip, these radiators, in most occasions for the passenger cars, shouldn't be too heavy. If it's got any stop leak in it, it's gonna have some weight to it. The second thing is, we definitely shouldn't have coolant coming out like this. This coolant is quite nasty and it's well oxidized. So there is restriction right in here. I've got another radiator that we can tear apart and actually look at the rows. So let's go take a look at that one. So we're gonna take this radiator apart, pulling these tangs out. Of course, we did this earlier to be pretty easy. Pull the side plastic tank off and there you have it. There is all of the stop leak. Now on this particular radiator that we just pulled out of the Buick, not as bad as this, but I did want to show you guys what stop leak will do over time. And you can surely see these fins which circulate all of that coolant. Think of a coffee straw. Coffee straw is very narrow. It's the same principle with this radiator core. As that coolant passes through, it's got to quench and cool. If there's any restrictions, it's going to be a problem. So stop leak may help you out if you're in a bind, but you really need to flush all that goopity goo out of that radiator as soon as you get to a point where you can service the coolant system. We did identify the leak. It's the bypass tubes, very common. They're plastic. We're actually going to get these bypass tubes that are metal. This is an updated design, so we don't see this car back in the shop. I'm Frank. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Share this to the world and your friends. If you like the videos, give us a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feel like you've got a car need, get it down in the comments and we'll video the best we can right here from inside the garage.